What's up everyone? So I've been using REST for my backend servers ever since I started web development and it served me well because most of the time I was using just JavaScript. But I've been using TypeScript in my project for a while now and I've come to realize that REST is probably not the greatest choice for me. So let me show you what I mean. I currently have a few projects in VS Code here. It's a full stack Discord bot with its own dashboard powered by Next.js. There's also an Express API, which is the only project here that can directly access the database. So both the Discord bot and the dashboard have to send API requests to my Express server in order to get data or make changes in the database. So in my Express server, I have an API route over at forward slash users where you can send a get request to in order to get back a user. You can obviously imagine this is where you would usually query your database. In my case, I'm just sending a hard-coded object back with the user ID and their name. The ID has a type of number and the name has a type of string. So I want you to keep in mind these types because if we go to our Discord bot and go to the get user slash command, you can see that we're sending a get request to this forward slash user route. But the problem here is the data that we're getting back has the type of any. And it makes sense that we're getting this type because the bot is completely separate from the API. But in terms of type safety, this is obviously not good. It's the same case in my dashboard where I'm trying to get the user from the same forward slash user route, but I'm still getting the user as any. Now I could manually cast a type and set the return type to an ID of number and name of string. But the problem here is if we go back to our API and let's say over here we change the ID to a string and let's say we add a new property called age and set it to like 20. If we go back, this type is suddenly outdated. This is where TRPC is super helpful. Now TRPC is nothing new. It's been around for a while, but I only recently started using it in a few projects and I've been loving it ever since. So anyway, I have this other project set up, which is the same as the last one, except this one is set up with TRPC. Before I get to showing the project, I want to explain what TRPC is very briefly because it may seem confusing to beginners at first. So TRPC is not a backend. It's not like Express or Fastify. What it is, is a type safe layer on top of your API. To achieve that, it does change the way you write your API routes. Now, there are two places where you can install TRPC, the server and the client. The server in this case is our Express API. Over here, you can see that we're using the TRPC server package. And with this, we're setting up something called the app router. This is super important because this is where we define all our API routes. The API routes in this case are actually written as methods inside of this object. I've used the same example as I did with REST and I've named this method getUser. You can name them whatever you want them to be. With this, we're returning an object with the ID of one and the name of John Doe, just like we did in our previous example. And the types are obviously the same as well. Now notice how we're exporting a bunch of stuff from this file. And this is required for where we are setting up our express server. Notice how the forward slash TRPC route, which I believe you can change to whatever you want it to be. We're using the app router, which is being exported from this file. So for any API calls to this route, TRPC will be handling those. Everything else is almost the same as it was before. The only difference is now that we're defining our routes inside of this object. Now let me show you how we handle this on the client side. Technically the client side here is another backend application, which is our Discord bot. But here you'll notice that we have a file inside the utils folder for our TRPC. But you may notice that the package that we're using here is slightly different. It is trpc slash client and not trpc slash server. Now, all you have to do in order to start sending API requests to your backend is defining a trpc client object with the link to your API route using this HTTP batch link, which is also from trpc client. Once again, I believe this route right here can be changed. So in the API, if you go to index.ts, I believe you can change this to whatever route you want it to be, but it must also reflect it on the client as well. So anyway, this is the trpc object that we're going to be using in order to send the API requests. Now, a very important thing which brings the type safety that we're looking for is this app router generic. So where are we getting this from? So if I command click on this, you can see that this is from our API where we defined our app router, but the app router type is actually this type of app router. And this is really important because inside our client, this is what we're using 
to get all the type safety. So if I type trpc dot, you can see that we're getting a get user property. So let's see this in action. If I go back to the slash command from our previous example, you can see that I'm just importing the trpc object from our trpc file instead of Axios as we did with our previous example. Here we can use trpc.getRouter and you can see that we're getting full type safety over here and we can see .query which is a method and this query method will actually call the API which is why we're using await. So down here if I type user and check the type of this, you can see that we have id which is a number and name which is a string. The great thing here is if I go back to my API and let's say I change the ID once again to a string and the age to let's say 20, which is going to be a number. If I go back and I hover over this, you can see that the ID has changed its type to string and the age is now a number. I cannot emphasize on how good this is, at least for me. Of course, this is an issue if your clients and servers are not in the same code base. But for me, that's rarely ever the case. So I really hope you learned something new. I highly recommend you check out the official TRPC docs because this video was a very, very general overview on how this stuff works. And there's a lot more to learn about TRPC. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.